set me free. There's something about being free. Free to lift your hands. Free to tell them thank you. Free to worship him in spirit and in truth. Something about being free. Amen. Love of the Lord, one more time, God has spared our life. He's given us a measure of grace that we can enter his house with thanksgiving and press into his courts with praise. We've been summoned to gather around the sacred scripture today that is found in Hebrews chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, to which he obtained, obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gift, and through it, he being dead, still speaks by faith. Enoch was taken away so that he did not see them. It was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is of the water of those that diligently seek him. By faith, nor being divinely warned of things not yet seen, move with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. The word of God for the people of God, and we all say, Amen. Amen. For the time I have before you, the next 30 to 45 minutes, I want to preach to you about elevated faith. Turn to your name and say, do you have an elevated faith? It's this quarter, our quarterly theme is elevation. And I seem to be suggesting today that if you're going to receive elevation in the physical, there must be a spiritual elevation before there can be a physical manifestation. It will take a little while to hit you, but hopefully you like the seven a.m. You'll get it in one while and we'll be done. That, that, that many of us are desiring things to happen in the physical that we're not spiritually ready to handle. It won't be long, but that, that all of us have one common denominator, and it's called faith. Everyone that is alive expresses some type of faith. No one can live a single day without exercising faith, not in heavenly places, but faith in the physical realm. You see, when you got up this morning and you got ready for worship today, uh, although the sun was up, you went into your restroom and you flipped a switch and you turned on the lights. Someone said, that's faith. I can sit down now because the sermon is complete. That's all faith is. Flipping the switch. Accessing, listen to me, the power and the system that is already connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That the, the challenge sometimes isn't that God is not able, but no one flip faith switch. Okay, it'll be a little while before I hit you. That, 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 that you can decide to walk in darkness if you like. 
but there's already a system in, in place that dispels darkness. It's called the light. And in order for you to access the light, he said, all I need you to do is have enough faith to flip the switch. And you have access to the power to turn on lights. Maybe you say, preacher, that's fine, but every now and again, BC cuts off the power. And so you might have access to the switch, but there's no power. But God says, have no fear that, that if you plan ahead, I've got other devices that give you life. But it's the same switch. That he said, if you've got no switch with a power source, you could pick up a searchlight. And the searchlight will work if you hit the, the switch. Can I, can I suggest to you that searchlights are nice, but if you walk around and never turn on the switch, you can't blame the searchlight. I'm almost done. That, that many of us complain about what God isn't doing in our life. And God is saying, show me your faith. Show me what you turn on. Show me how you plan to access the power that I've already released to you. So we wake up every day complaining about how dark this world is. And God says, you are the light. Oh God, that, that we complain about what the government isn't doing. We complain about what the police isn't doing. When God said, you are the salt of the earth. That, that God said, you can't change nothing until you turn on the principle, until you touch a fire, until you light up the place, and then you show people a better way. Many of us... Uh, believe that when we talk about faith and we hear this faith talk, we believe it's devoid of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So the first challenge we have is what is faith? So to explain what faith is, allow me two points to tell you what faith is not. And so faith is not the ability to manipulate God. Okay. Some of us believe that when we access faith, that we are somehow forcing God to do something for us. That's a misconception. You see, God doesn't favor you more than he favors your neighbor. That when you do what he asks you to do, you have access to what he has already released. This is, this is going to be wrong today. That, that there's some stuff that God said that i already released to you. I just need you to work in faith so you're not manipulating God. God said it's my good desire. It's, it's my privilege. It's my pleasure. I want to give you these things but somehow people have attacked him to the source. So whenever we operate in faith, we believe we're doing God some favor. See God, see, see. I came to church, see. And God is saying, you know, whether you're crying or smiling, it doesn't move me 